AMC stock, telltale signs of a potential short squeeze. With a court hearing on the ape class action lawsuit coming up, June promises to be a volatile month for AMC Entertainment. This article was posted seven hours ago. I want to go over this, give you guys my opinions on the next month or two with AMC, as well as talk about the days to cover so everyone is fully aware of the importance of this. You have not been at this level ever in this short squeeze saga with AMC stock. And I think this leads to a massive opportunity. I want to give you guys some of my thoughts on how to capture that opportunity. Let's get into this video. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time here or if you are new, first thing we ask you to do is hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Second thing we ask you to do is source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Source those comments that can greatly help the community, especially if they are positive and productive. So let's hear them down below in the comment section. So let's get into it, guys, with this article. I just read the title and the subtitle, so we're not going to reread that. But the key points, so far this year, AMC stock has outperformed the S&P 500 with a 14.5% increase. Obviously, this was a lot larger before kind of what we've seen recently. And that's been just basically AMC stock just falling and there's been no end in sight. AMC short sellers have racked up mark to market losses of approximately 159 million thanks largely to sky high borrow fees. AMC's upcoming court hearing combined with other developments may create enough volatility to cause a short squeeze. Why a short squeeze may occur in AMC. So far this year, shares of AMC have taken investors for a wild ride. The movie theater chain stock shot up as much as 93% in late February, and it's currently up 14.5% outperforming the S&P 500 by about 5%. Estimates suggest that some $662 million worth of short interest in AMC is currently at stake. Since the beginning of 2023, short sellers have seen about $159 million in market-to-market -market losses. Much of these losses can be explained by an increase in short interest in AMC. The fees short sellers must pay to borrow stock to short depend on supply and demand. Because a lot of short sellers are opening positions in the stock, these fees are on the rise. Currently, AMC borrow fees uh, for AMC are around 65% annualized. Still, that's nowhere close to the, to, to the fees short sellers had to pay at the beginning of April. Nearly 1,000%. Arbitrage traders are shorting AMC. The main reason for the intense short activity in AMC this year is the fact that some traders are using an arbitrage strategy targeting both the stock and the AMC preferred equity units. With this strategy, traders short AMC while assuming a long position in APE. They're betting that the spread between the two equities will be eliminated once the APEs are converted to common stock. It should be a practically guaranteed win, but the conversion has been delayed by a class action lawsuit resulting in mounting losses for the short sellers. And if AMC shares head further upwards, the short sellers will likely lose even more money to a short squeeze. Now, we've seen the short interest go up to about 27%. You've recently seen it fall to about 21%. Now, why this really is, is happening is in my personal opinion, at least, you've, you've, you've seen short sellers realize that, hey, I don't want to be short in AMC the shares because there's too much risk here. I just don't want to do that. But what they are doing is they're taking a smaller amount, which is still millions of dollars. Consider this, if a short seller had a short position on AMC worth $25 million, if they can just go out and do the same thing, short the same amount of shares that cost them $2 million by those synthetic shares, by basically shorting AMC synthetically using market makers, they'll just go out and make a $2 million trade with the options because they get the same leverage. But what happens if shorts get out of their short positions and create that synthetic short trade with the options does not get captured as short interest because market makers are creating the market. They are the ones that are shorting AMC. And if you followed this channel for the past week or two, 
then you would see that that has been what has happened recently. That you've seen trades worth millions of dollars be placed on AMC stock and the short interest has fallen. At the same time, AMC stock has fallen over 20%. From my calculations, even if you assume that the short interest really did drop from 27% down to 20.5%, these short interest, including these deep in the money puts that have caused mark makers to short stock in AMC, you're still looking at a short interest over 30% for AMC. And we'll talk about that in another video, probably the video coming out later today. So I think that the stock is still massively short, right? I, 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 think, I think that's a fact. And I think all of you guys would agree with that. But what does this article say about June? It says, buckle up for a volatile ride in June. In April, AMC shares rallied after the class action lawsuit put the brakes on the Ape conversion. In theory, this was bullish for the company's common stock. But in May, AMC experienced a correction with shares falling about 20%. Currently, AMC is in limbo, which could present an opportunity. According to renowned short seller investor, Chim Jim Chanos, who holds short positions in AMC, when meme stocks rally, the time to enter these trades has already passed. Based on this logic, a brief decline in AMC stock could present a new opportunity to enter the trade. The court hearing scheduled for the end of the month regarding a settlement on the class action suit that has prevented the conversion of apes may lead to increased volatility in AMC in June. In this previ previous article, you can follow the timeline of the trajectory of the transformation of apes into common stock. Until the end of June, speculation and developments related to the court decision may cause enough volatility to put extra pressure on shorting activity, which could result in short squeezes. Now, on top of that, I do think June will also be a very important time uh, for AMC in regards to GME earnings. I think GME earnings are also going to be a very important catalyst because GME kind of like AMC, has seen in 2020 the revenue fall off a cliff, their profits gone, same with AMC, and they've started to recover. Well, GME, they're going to uh, hopefully, optimistically, report a profit. If they do, that's going to be two consecutive quarters in a row. That might foreshadow good fundamentals coming as well with AMC, but uh, just down to the pure logic of, of that, GME goes up, AMC goes up, GME goes down, AMC goes down. And based off of what we've reported with, with GME's expectations, they're expecting to report a loss per share of 12 cents, about the same as last quarter when they surprised with a profit. So it's possible you do get a surprise profit and could send both of these stocks parabolic. Now, briefly, if you are unaware of what has happened today with the economic data, the unemployment rate was at 3.4%, the last reading we got. Well, today's reading, the unemployment rate jumped to 3.7%. You were expecting 3.5%. So unemployment rate going higher, really indicative of a recession. We're going to have to see more reports coming out, but the closer you get to 4% and break above 4%, it's almost mathematically impossible to avoid a recession when unemployment ticks up that aggressively. So we'll see what happens there. But the real head scratcher, like I pointed out in the last video, is the non-farm payrolls for the month of May. You were expecting 190,000. This came in at 339,000. Makes absolutely zero sense markets they're taking this positively today even though on one hand unemployment rate recessionary data non-farm payrolls the complete opposite suggesting the fed has more work to do all in all the fed needing to hike rates more or a recession is not good because what is the ultimate outcome a recession so markets are reacting pretty positively to today and i I do think there's factors that are obviously uh, playing a role to that.
But I think the next couple of weeks are going to be very volatile as the month of May was really fueled by this hype in AI and this hype in AI is starting to deflate. I indicated that this bubble has likely popped and it takes time for bubbles worth trillions of dollars to pop and this AI bubble is worth trillions of dollars, meaning the market cap that has been added to the top seven companies in the United States has been over a trillion dollars. That takes time to work out. And you're seeing that again today. Stocks like C3 AI dropping, stocks that reported earnings like Salesforce dropping today, Nvidia dropping today in a day where the NASDAQ is up about one and a half percent or about one percent at the time of recording this video. So you got some very weird things that are also happening in the markets. Now, if we take a look at AMC stock, we'll also give you guys a, a brief update on GME probably here in this video as well. Short score of 92, $507.04 million worth of short positions in AMC. Estimated short interest of free flow at 21.58%. Free flow out and loan at 35%. Shares out and loan 182.43 million. Days to cover 7.31. Cost to borrow 57.51 and 100% share utilization. Now, you're also seeing cost to borrow fees that are jumping here today. Cost to borrow max uh, sitting at 115%. Cost to borrow minimum at 50%. It was just at 63%. Cost to borrow average at almost 70%. Now, days to cover. This is why the short score for AMC stock is going higher. Days to cover at 7.31 means that if you have... Go ahead and do some simple math here. 112 million shares that are sold short. Let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. 112 million divided by 7.31. That means your average volume is around 15 million. The average volume we've seen recently is more like 10 to 12 million. So days to cover likely to continue to go higher and we can somewhat guesstimate where the days to cover is about to go if we divide that by call it 10 then you're at 11.2 million that's more or less where the volume has been at on an average basis recently maybe nine days to cover nine or ten days to cover is is where we are going that means that it's going to take nine or ten days for shorts to completely cover on their short positions if they needed to. Basically a reflection of a lot of shares sold short with low volume. And the higher the days to cover, the bigger and the faster a short squeeze can ultimately happen. This is like GME. If we take a look at GME's numbers here, she's totally about to turn on the light. <laughs> there you go. Take a look at GME's numbers. You got a days to cover of 16. So the days to cover being at 16, again, huge. AMC, if their days to cover can get to about 10, like I said, 9 or 10, they're both going to be very high. And they both will likely squeeze in tandem. Because what happens even with a catalyst like GME earnings, GME sees more volume. AMC sees more volume. But if you already had a lot of volume in both these names, that increased volume is not going to be as big of a deal. But like you see with GME and AMC, days to cover have been higher. Volume has been lower. When you do go into a big catalyst like GME earnings next week, well, you're going to see that volume have a much bigger impact on the share prices. And that's what I expect for GME earnings. Now, if GME can surprise with a profit, that's going to mean these stocks are going much, much higher. If they can, if GME does fall, I don't really expect a huge fall unless the earnings are just absolutely terrible. Now, let's take a look at, at their options while we're here, GME option activity. Uh, seeing a lot of call activity. Again, you've been seeing this on a day-by-day -day basis. GME stock is up 2.5%. And you have seen a 75% positive order value. If you take a look at AMC, more deep in the money puts that are being placed on the stock. You have seen seven orders today worth $2.62 million with a positive order value. 
of 0%. And if we take a look at the Stocko Tracker data, the next two weeks option activity, nothing too crazy. Does kind of open the door up for more options to be placed on AMC to get more market maker activity from those increased supposedly option uh, trades. We'll see what happens there. That's simply just guesstimating. But for June 16th, you got 6,400 calls in the money, 422,000 calls out the money. Very high ratio here. Very high uh, just amount of options. For June 16th, puts in the money at 339,000, puts out the money 488,000. For the next big option expiration, for uh, July 21st, you got 3,400 calls in the money, 389,000 calls out the money. In the money puts 395,000, out the money puts 476,000. If we take a look at AMC's volume here on the day today, again, six and a half million shares. A very low volume day. Very, very low volume day. So maybe the days to cover goes higher. Maybe it turns into an even larger squeeze. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned for the next video where we uncover the real short interest in AMC stock. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.